Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to use Microsoft Visio Professional 2013 to make block flow diagrams for chemical engineering applications. To get started, we're going to need to access our template. To do that, we go and click on Engineering, and this will bring up a number of engineering templates we can use. The one we're interested in is Process Flow Diagrams, so we'll click that. It gives us a choice of units. We'll just select, select US. We don't really care today. It's going to bring up our paper. The paper is not a standard size, so what we're going to do first is change the layout. So we'll go to the Design tab, click Size, click Letter, Auto Size to get rid of that funny line, and click Orientation, and then Landscape. And now we have our paper ready. You'll see on the left side of our screen that Visio when we open a template, it automatically populates that template with a number of useful stencils. So these stencils are useful for process flow diagrams. Um, you can go through and click them at your own leisure to see what's in here. The nice thing about this is you don't have to actually make those figures yourself. They automatically come with the program. Um, what's not included in the process flow diagram are our block shapes, which we need for block flow diagrams. So we're going to go into more shapes, go down to general, and click basic shapes. That will bring up a list of just basic shapes that we can use in our diagrams. We're going to click and drag that to bring it to the top of our list, since that's what we're going to be using today. One useful thing about this tool is that you'll notice there's this tab called Quick Shapes. If you click on that, this is populated with a number of shapes that you might use more frequently. In order to get shapes into and out of your Quick Tab, your Quick Shapes tab, all you do is click and drag them into and out of this area that's over this bar here. So maybe we want to add squares, we can pull it up and maybe we can take it out. So now we're ready to start making our diagram. Today we're going to make a distillation column in a whiskey distillery. So we'll click and drag a rectangle onto our board. It's a little hard to see so we're going to zoom in a little bit using the flywheel in the lower right corner. You can also do this with your mouse. We're going to go to Home, and you can also change the orientation either by clicking on any of these boxes, by clicking on the Rotate button, uh, or you can use the Position button here in the Home tab to rotate shapes. You can rotate left, right, flip it vertically. Not useful for blocks, but it is for some of these other figures you can work with. We want to add a label to our distillation column, so you're going to right click on the column, click Edit Text. It's going to zoom in a little bit. And we are going to write the label, Distillation Column. I want them two lines, so we'll leave it like that. So now we're ready to actually add our streams. So we're going to go to our Quick Shapes tab. We're going to scroll down until we get to Pipelines. And we're going to click and drag that onto our board. So this is the one, more, one of the more powerful features of Visio is it has a lock function. So you can actually lock arrows to your different shapes. And this becomes useful if we need to move things around. So we can move our distillation column and that arrow stays linked to our column, which is really nice. So we can move stuff around, reorient, see how things work with relationship to each other and not lose the connectivity. So this yellow box is over our label for the pipeline. Pipeline and equipment automatically comes labeled. We can't read it very well, so we'll increase that up to font size 12. You might be tempted to write over this. That is bad practice. What you want to do to actually label this figure is to right click on the pipeline, go to data, click shape data. This is not available for the blocks, so you have to actually edit it manually. But for pipelines and equipment, you can come in and edit the shape data. And we're going to write the label in the description box. For the whiskey distillation column, our inlet's called the beer feed. Beer feed. And you might notice that when we click out of that, it doesn't update. And that's because these um, pipelines come with an automatic tag format. So now we need to go into the Process Engineering tab, click Edit Tag Format, and we're going to click Modify. So it comes with this automatic label. You can change it if you want. We're going to just make it our description, so we'll delete the old one, double click to add description to that, click OK, click OK again, and now it updates with our description. So you can add a lot of information here if you want to. 
So that line's a little small. We can go back to the Home tab, go to Line under our Shape Styles, click on that, go down to Weight, and increase the weight as well. So now maybe we want to add, now we need to add our outlet streams. So how we can do that, there are a number of ways we can do that. We can go up to the connector. Maybe we don't have access to the pipeline stencils or we don't just don't like to use them. You can go in with the connector, click and drag off of our column and release it. And now we have a new connector, our new pipeline. And it automatically populates as a pipeline. So we can come in and write our description. In this case, our, our tops are gonna be the low lines or the low line, low lines. But you might notice, oh, this doesn't have an arrow. So in order to add the arrow, we go back to our line, we go down to arrows, and we can add an arrow to the end, okay? The difference that you're gonna see is that the arrowhead is actually different if we use the pipeline versus the connector, so you probably wanna be consistent with which one that you're using. Now we can also come in and we can add in our bottoms. So we can control out click to copy that down drag the connector over, our, our labels overlapped a little bit, so we're gonna move that off. And now we can relabel that as our bottoms, which are our thin stillage. Okay, you can also take these arrows and connect them to another box, the same way we connected to the distillation column. You can connect off the screen if you want to. Um, we're not gonna worry about that today. Um, one thing that we do care about is if we have overlap in our lines, which we sometimes will when we have comp complicated figures. So let's say we have that happen. The standard is in block flow diagrams, process flow diagrams, process and instrumentation diagrams, is that the horizontal line is dominant. So that one should not be broken, whereas the vertical line should be. And that is the opposite of what Visio does. So we need to come in and actually change that. So we're gonna go to the design tab going to go over to the layout section, click on this little arrow here. It's going to bring up a window. We're going to go down to line jumps, add line jumps to vertical lines. So we'll change that, click OK. And now we have it um, acting in the proper way that we want it to. Let's say you have some issues with your lines. Maybe they start acting a little funny. You probably want to come in and check your connectors button and make sure you're still on right angle. Because if you get straight lines or curved lines, your lines can start looking kind of weird. So you can come in and change that if you need to. Okay, we're gonna put this back where it was and our label reorients itself. So the last thing we need to do is add our text box with our name and title, et cetera. So we we'll do that by going to the insert tab, go over to text box, click it, and then we can click and drag in the region that we want it to be. We can add our name, the date, we can add our school or our place of work. We can go to home and click out of that. And then we can change where we want our alignment to be. We can add a line around the outside of the box, perhaps. And now we actually have a completed block flow diagram, pretty simple. So we can zoom out and take a look at the whole thing, make sure it looks okay pretty straightforward and we can go in and print so to print we just go to file print and print in the same way you would in any other word program and with that we're finished with our tutorial we hope that you learned something and that it was useful for you